So I'm going to use a lot, a lot of math words in this one, and I apologize. Hopefully I'll, I'll make it clear. Uh, I want to show the difference um, between um, proportionality and having a, a constant rate of change. So uh, we're dealing with linear relationships here, linear functions, linear equations, basically things that make lines on graphs. And I just want to distinguish the idea of, of a linear function being proportional and it having a constant rate of change. And all linear uh, functions will have a constant rate of change. Okay, but not all of them will be proportional. So I'll, I'll, I have these two functions here, and I could have um, I could have graphed these, but we need that we need to actually deal with the numbers here. So just to make it easier, we're looking at these functions um, in in as tables instead of you know lines on graphs. So um, let's look at let's first find the rate of change for the constant rate of change for each of these functions. So the rate of change is just the change in the output variable divided by the change in the input variable. So you can look at this function as um, s becoming i. And we just do this left to right um, just because uh, we tend to read things left to right. So here's the input variable s, the output um, i. And, or you might, you know, a standard way to look at this is you might get a table that's, you know, x, x, y. So x becomes y. So, or, you know, crazy v, apparently. Let's make that a y. Okay. So, uh, the rate of change is the changes in the output over the changes in the input. So, we just pick um, two points here. And so, let's look at the uh, the difference in the in the i. So, uh, 2 minus 6 over the difference in, in s, 1 minus 3. So 2 minus 6 is negative 4, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, and that simplifies to, the negatives cancel out, and then 4 over 2 um, is 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the rate of change is um, 2. And uh, to show that it's, that it's constant, we can just pick another two um, um, ordered pairs and then show that the rate between them, the rate of change between them is also two. So uh, the rate of change of the i's here is six minus eight. Um, and then four, uh, three minus four, excuse me, three minus four. Okay, so six minus eight is negative two. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. It's magically changed colors on me. And uh, that, the um, negatives cancel out. And so the rate of change is 2. So th this function here has a constant rate of change. It's, it's always 2. Um, or if you want to like, look at it as 2 over 1. So i changes 2 for every um, change in 1 of, of s. Okay. Um, and all right, so that so it has a constant rate of change, okay. And um, but is it proportional? So if if a function is proportional, that means the ratio between the um, coordinates will always be the same. So the ratio of s to i will always be equivalent. So um, for the first ordered pair, I have one. For the ratio of one to two. And actually, let's just make this a different color. This is our our proportionality color. I don't know. How about blue? Okay. So one over, one over two. Um, we could do the ratio of three to six, three to six, which equals one over two. You know, we could divide both those by three. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. Okay. Four divided by eight. You know, the ratio of four to eight is equal to divide both those by four, and that's one half. So the ratios of of s to i, uh, whatever ordered pair you look at, is always going to be one half. And uh, so this is proportional. I'm going to say pro, and it's got a constant rate of change. Okay. Um, this guy here is has a constant rate of change, but it's not proportional. I'll show you how. So the constant rate of change. 
we do the the change in O over the change in N. So uh, let's just pick these guys. So three minus five over um, one minus two. So that is equal to equal to um, negative two over negative one. So and that would become two. Um, and then I don't know, let's let's pick these two. Let's mix it up. So uh, the change in O would be uh, three minus thirteen. over the change in n, uh, 1 minus 6. Where do you go? 3 minus 13 would be negative 10, and 1 minus 6 would be negative 5. We could simplify that too. Uh, the negatives would go away. There's two of them that make a positive 10 over 5. You could divide both those by 5, so uh, we would get 2 over 1 or 2. So there's a, there's a constant rate of change here. Uh, it's 2. 2O per 1N. Um, but let me show you how this is not proportional. So the, the ratios of the of N to O will not always be the same. So uh, we could look at this first order pair, uh, 1 to 3, you know, that's you know, 1 third. Um, the ratio of 2 to 5. So the, uh, 1 third is not equal to 2 fifths. And you can, uh, you know, if you don't believe me, you do one divided by three, that's 0.3 repeating. Two divided by five is 0.4. So that's that's not the same. Um, six, the ratio of six to 13 would be, you know, we can't simplify that more, but we could get the decimal equi decimal equivalent here. Is you know, that's obviously not 0.3 or 0.4. It's you know, 0.4, six, bunch of stuff. So the ratio of n to o is they're not equivalent. They don't have the same value. So this is this is not proportional, but it does have a constant rate of change. Uh this does have a constant rate of change and the ratios uh between the the variables of s to i uh will always be equivalent. You can always reduce them down to in this case uh, uh one half.